Hello, basement dwellers. This is a big, big show today. We got a lot to cover. $500 silver. Listen, there's just one itty bitty tiny part of the system that needs to fall apart. I mean, like 1% of this part of the system, and we could see easily $500 silver. The number is actually closer to $600 silver, but in the interest of being conservative, like I always am with my silver price estimates, I notched it down one bit to $500 per ounce. But we've also got big, scary news from ABC, the American Broadcasting Corporation. I don't know what the C stands for. Nonetheless, terrorist warning, which is no laughing matter here in the United States. We'll take a look at that as well. Also, new, crazy, I mean, absolutely crazy gold rush level news out of Costco, actually news out of Wells Fargo about what they're estimating Costco may be selling in gold bullion right now. But on top of it all, we have a special treat today, a massive live update from the state capitol from our friend Patrick Holland from the Missouri Freedom Initiative and He'll be joined by Daniel Diaz from Citizens for Sound Money. Why? Come on, basement dwellers, why? Why is it so important that we get legal tender legislation to protect your right? Yes, you, right? Silver and gold investor to use the metals as legal tender. One good reason why you may want to consider is that your founding fathers, who had great sacrifice to themselves, wrote it into the Constitution. It's a big deal. Why is Missouri a big deal, you may be asking. Why? Number one, right, legal tender legislation in Missouri, and it's not just Missouri, it's sweeping the country, but Missouri, it's the heartbeat of America. It's where Ron's basement originates from, the silver and gold capital of the universe. It's very important, but even more, even more so, have you thought about this? It's a little known fact, so don't, you know, you heard it first here in the basement. Did you know, did you know that if Missouri passes legal tender legislation, it will be the ultimate slap in the face to our old friend. Let's get him out. I'll be right back to our old friend. Yeah, there he is. Jeremy Powell, Gomer Powell, Jerome Powell. There he is, right? There's his unicorn. That's what he uses. He squeezes that to make more paper. Unicorn fart test money, but why? Why would that be the ultimate slap in the face to the Federal Reserve if right here in Missouri we pass legal tender legislation? Well, let me tell you why, because little known fact, there's two, not one, two Federal Reserve banks in Missouri. Yes, there's one here in St. Louis and one in Kansas City. I think it's the only state with two Federal Reserve banks, but I might be wrong. I didn't do any research on that, but what a slap to the Fed. Yes, Missouri, despite the fact that on the eastern border and the western border, you've got your Federal Reserve fortresses built, right? Missouri stood up for their citizens' rights to use gold and silver as legal tender. Let's talk about the CPI numbers. Let's talk about gold and silver. Let's talk about what's going on in the markets today. I saw Jake from Jake's Custom Parts earlier said silver and gold are holding up pretty well in this street fight. I've got shocking news for you, right? Gold. Talking with Peter Grandich just a few seconds ago, he said, you know, gold should really be down 50 or or $100 this morning. We had shocking high CPI numbers. I'm going to tell you why. It's noise. Forget about it. Silver's going higher. Gold is going higher. Actually, what we've seen this morning is, like Jake said, a street fight. Have you noticed? I mean, have you noticed the short-term noise is just not getting to the metals prices, okay? Okay, here, soon, I wrote this out for you, soon, the market will realize that the Fed can't do much more to fight inflation. Guys, we've talked about this for weeks. Inflation is going up and up and up. Rates are already high. Everybody's sitting around clamoring. When's the Fed going to lower rates? When's the Fed going to lower rates? Right? Especially the general stock market. It's priced to perfection. Okay. Gold and silver are laughing. Gold and silver, I'm telling you, know that the Fed's never going to raise rates because they can't. Think about this. Or lower rates. I'm sorry. They're not going to lower rates because that'll send inflation to the roof. But they can't raise rates either to fight this wave of inflation coming at us. 
Think about the amount. We won't go look at the debt clock. You can do that on your own. <laughs> think about the amount of government debt we have in this country. Then think about the amount of corporate debt. These big corporations over the last 10 years were borrowing money like no tomorrow, right? They could borrow uh, money for 10, 15 years at 2 or 3%, buy back their stock, give themselves big bonuses. Think of the government debt. Think of the corporate debt. Think about the personal debt. Hopefully not you, basement dwellers, because we don't like debt. We hate debt. But there's so much debt in the world right now that it cannot accommodate cannot accommodate higher interest rates. So as inflation goes up and up and up, and I got news for you, the old wizard, I don't, I'm don't. i tempted to get Jerome out again with his box, but the old wizard of Oz, Gomer Powell, Jerome Powell, right? Right? When he, he doesn't have as much control as he used to. He's still got a lot of sway. Don't get me wrong, right? But there's certain parts of inflation. It just can't be addressed with monetary policy. Want a fancy word? That's what the Fed's interest rate policy is referred to as. Monetary policy. That's great. It's not as potent anymore. And on top of that, okay, there's this whole other component to inflation called supply side inflation. Like oil, hmm, you know, the, the blood of the world economy, right? We, we've talked about that before. Oil is everything. Jerome Powell can't control the price of oil. Actually, this group of countries, huh? BRICS, have you heard of them? Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates, and about 40 other countries that are requesting to join. Well, 31, that was an exaggeration. Anyway, they are beginning to control the price of oil. Joe Biden tried to try to control the price of oil. Yeah, did you know? Didn't you know? Like right before the last midterm election, he drained our strategic petroleum reserve to keep oil prices low so that you would feel rich and you would vote for Democrats. This is not a political show. That's just generally accepted what went on. And if you look at the amount of oil in the strategic petroleum reserve, I think it's lower than like the 1980s. So he can't drain it anymore because he never refilled it after he drained it. Right? He drained the piggy bank. All right, The Fed can't control the price of oil. The Fed can't control inflation as much as they had in the past. And the Fed certainly isn't going to be able to do what Paul Volcker did in the 1980s and raise interest rates through the roof to control inflation. Because back then, there's one little thing that's different when you compare back then to right now. Back then, we did not have anywhere near the amount of government, corporate, or personal debt, right? And it's not just us, guys. It's the entire world on top of it. The entire world has, what, $300 trillion in debt, they say? Man, I got news for you. The entire world can't accommodate higher interest rates. So when inflation continues, like we saw this morning, and gold is right there, silver, they're right there, right on the cusp. They're there, they're clawing, they're ready to recognize this. When the world, more than just you know it, I know it, right? Our light bulb went off. We're like the first light that went on in the uh, in the cabin in the morning. But when everybody else wakes up and their lights come on and they realize that, oh, you know what? That those though, that 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 crazy man in St. Louis in his basement was right. The Fed can't control inflation, and the Fed can't raise rates. I need to do something with my dollars because they're losing value. You know, I mean, it's. I know it's hard to believe. You guys got to get yourself one of these. I'm serious. They're readily available. They can print them at will. Paper dollars. Oh, look at that thing. They are kind of pretty. Nowhere near as pretty as silver. It's losing value. Look, this is what it does. There, watch. It goes down in value. When they wake up, that's when things get super, super interesting. Oh, let's talk about, you want to see something shocking? Oh, shoot. I forgot to get ready for the. Hold on a second. Bear with me. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. I'm going to show you something. This is worth waiting for. Stunning when it comes to inflation. Okay. But I failed to pre prepare properly for this. So bear with me. It's going to take about 30 seconds. In the meantime, I want you to take a deep breath and smile. <laughs> this is worth waiting for. Do, do, do. 
here we go. Welcome to Ron's Basement, the home of technical problems. Okay, we're almost there. And bingo, select. You're probably like me. You know, you get older, doing all this stuff gets a little more challenging, all this technology. This is going to blow you away. This is, this, come on. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Hold on here. Hold on. Let's get there. Let's get there. Come on, Ronnie. You can do it. All right. I'm just going to put this on the stage. There you go. Hold on. You don't want to look at me. You want to look at this. That's not it. That's not it. Oh, my gosh. If this isn't in here, I'm going to be so embarrassed. That's not. There it is. Okay, guys. This is crazy. Look at this chart. Okay. Look on the left. Orange juice, coffee, white bread. The list goes on and on. The next column, January of 2020. That was the price. Look at orange juice. $3, okay, for 128 fluid ounces. Look at January 2024, $4.29. Price increase, 40%. We'll, we'll, and I want to say thank you to my, my old college roommate, Sean, who sent this to me. He's been providing me with some great information. Super smart guy. So thank you, Sean. Let's go look at ground beef. How's it done? Oh, it went from $5 a pound to $7 a pound, a 40% increase. This is inflation, okay? Uh, look at chicken breast, <laughs> $5 to $8. Eggs, $1.50 to $3. I mean, they're trying to tell you that, that inflation's under control, that inflation, uh, they're saying, oh yeah, inflation's 3.5% right now on annum. Well, yeah, but let's look back four years and let's look at like, this is stuff that we eat. Look at Cheerios. Three dollars Cheerios. Why don't they have Captain Crunch on there? I like cap peanut butter Captain Crunch. Anyway, three dollars to four twenty nine, forty percent increase. Inflation, inflation. This is not going away, guys. This is going to this potatoes, potatoes. Three dollars for three pounds. Four dollars and fifty cents. Okay, enough of that. I hopefully have provided you with ample proof that inflation has run out of control in this country. Hmm. And they wonder, right? The Democrats, not a political show. The Democrats wonder, why are people so depressed about the economy? Well, because, Joe, I'll tell you why. Because 98% of Americans have to buy stuff that's on that list. And if you didn't notice, Joe, most of it's been up by like 40, 50% in the last four years. So now you can say, oh, we got inflation under control. Yeah, after you destroyed us, you know, that's like you've been punching, you've been being, here, basement dweller, come on over to the basement, right? I'm gonna beat you in the face for four years. I would never do that. I'm not a violent person, but figuratively beat you in the face for four years and then say, well, I'm, uh, I'm gonna stop beating you so bad now. It's under control. Sorry, my anger management, uh, needed to be addressed, but now it is. I'm just going to hit you once a day now. I mean, they're still taking your money. I'm sorry. I'm trying to control my stress and blood pressure. That's what the doctors are saying. They're still taking your money. Oh, wow. We got inflation down to 3.5%. It'll only take, you know, 10 years now till the dollar loses another 50% of its value. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, guys, don't forget, we're going to have Patrick Holland and Daniel Diaz on here in just a few minutes. Well, actually, about 15 minutes. That was the plan. Uh, oh, let's talk. Is this real? Do you need to be scared? The FBI is talking about terrorism. Let's go. Oh, boy, I am really not prepared today. <laughs> this will just take a second, guys. Sorry. Here we go. Here we go. Share. Okay. And where was I? Here it is. Boom. Does that work? Let me go back here. All right. Okay. Boy, I'm moving you guys all over the place. Here we go. ABC News. ABC News. Right there. Foreign terrorists targeting the United States is increasingly concerning says the FBI director. The warning comes as experts predict ISIS will try to carry out a U.S. attack. I'm not trying to be, what's that word? I always forget the town crier, the, the sky is falling, but this is from ABC News. Foreign adversaries and terrorist groups are sharpening their aim at the United States, targeting cyber operations, security, and 
mafia-like tactics in an increasingly concerning quote-unquote way. FBI Director Christopher Wray said in a speech on Tuesday, uh, he was at the American Bar Association in Washington, D.C., said the agency is working to prevent a coordinated attack from terrorist groups such as now. Now, here's two key things. Well, let's read a little bit, but there's two key things to re to remember about this. Well, I'm just going to say them now before I forget. Number one, a lot of people are saying that because of the uh, immigration crisis, right? I don't know, 200,000 people a month or 100, who, who knows? A lot of people every month are coming into our country illegally. And there's no way to be able to tell what the background is of these people. I'm sure most of them are wonderful, nice people that just want to make their life better. OK, I'm not going to go down that path. But without proper checks and balances, we don't know if some bad guys are getting through as well. So that's point number one. Point number two, which really makes me mad, is that some people... Uh, some people are saying that they're making a big deal out of this potential for a terrorist attack because, hold on, I want to make sure I get this right, that it could be politically motivated because there's funding legislation right now uh, that's up for a vote and that maybe they're trying to scare people. And, you know, if that's the case, I don't I don't rule anything out. And again, I'm not saying that's the case. It's just another uh, people. Hold on. I'm getting some text messages here from. Uh, the people at, okay, I don't know what this is. Anyway, from Pat Holland, who we're going to have on here in about 15 minutes. Uh, and looks like there might be some type of breaking news that we can share with you. Okay, uh, here, let's just read this quote real quick. Foreign terrorists, including ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and their adherents, have renewed calls for attacks against Jewish communities here in the United States and across the West in statements and propaganda, propaganda, that's the FBI director says this, quote, the foreign terrorist threat and the potential for a coordinated attack here in the homeland, like the ISIS-K attack we saw at the Russia concert hall, that was horrible. I don't know if you guys saw video footage of that. Whole oh, horrible. Is now increasingly concerning. October 7th and the conflicts that followed will feed a pipeline of radicalized immobilization for years to come. Boy, enough of that. That is not happy, positive news now, is it, guys? Let's talk about silver and gold, okay? Silver, let's talk about you, you, you basement dwellers. You remember the Rocky Balboa? Remember the Rocky movies? Rocky 1, Rocky 2, they made a bunch of them, right? Do you get the feeling silver and gold are behaving that way now? Let's go out and look. Let's go out and look real quickly. Let's get an update on the silver price. Let's go out to Pimbex. Let's update. And okay, down $12. This is a good thing. Silver down 14 cents. Guys, this is a good thing. If, if you notice the silver price, the gold price, over the last, I'd say three to four weeks in particular, it's like Rocky Balboa, right? It gets knocked down, knocked down, and keeps coming back keeps coming back. Okay. Um, I want to say thank you though, right now to our sponsor, Pimbex. We're at their website. You can see it here, pimbex.com. Uh, if you find yourself in the market for silver, gold, platinum group metals, I'll never, ever, ever tell you what you should do. Should's a bad word. But what I would say is you may benefit from considering taking a look at Pimbex and comparing them to what you see from other online bullion dealers. What I found, what I found, my my honest truth experience with Pimbex was I could get the exact same products from Pimbex and I could get them at a much, much better price. Look, I'm Susie has certain words to describe the way I am. Uh, some of which I'm not allowed to repeat here in a live stream. But let's just say I'm frugal, resourceful. When I buy silver, I want to get the most silver for my money. But I want to make sure I'm getting a quality product from a company I can trust. And to me, Pembex checks all those boxes, okay? I think that if you consider Pembex, you'll discover what hundreds of basement dwellers have discovered, and that is they check all the boxes for you too. See if I can get this right. Left hand, Pimbex. They check all the boxes. Thank you, Pimbex, for sponsoring Ron's Basement. Now, guys, 500 people. 
What? Wow. Thank you for being here. Please give this a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I won't beg you for that again. And thank you for Super Chats. It goes a long way to help support the family. CPI numbers, short-term noise. Can you say that? Okay. Um, well, we covered that. Oh, oh, silver price. Sorry. Gold price. Silver price. Weebles wobble, but they won't fall down. Rocky Balboa, are you seeing it? We are. Are you able to accept the fact? Okay, it's like you've been you've been abused and neglected, hurt. Your feelings have been hurt. My feelings have been hurt over the last couple of years. It's not been easy, right? It's not been easy being a silver and gold investor. But can we realize that things are changing? We started talking about it back in December. That's when I thought the tide shifted. The pendulum, you know, a pendulum swings one way and just hit its apex and started coming back. I said that back in December. What 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 evidence have we had that things have indeed changed? Okay. Weebles wobble, but they won't fall down. That's like, I don't know if you remember that. Remember the weeble toy? It was this little toy. You push it and it would stand back up. Rocky Balboa down on the mat. That's gold. That's silver, right? At the end, always wins, always gets back up, finds its energy, finds its real strength. Silver and gold. Need I say God's money, nature's money, however you want to look at it, thousands of years. Universal acceptance. <laughs> What's this whispering thing? There's some term for it. And now there's people all over YouTube. I didn't even know I was doing it in PSR or whatever, right? Silver and gold, God's money. I whisper to you. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, anyway, what's what what's the what's are we stair stepping to new all-time high? Well, we are in gold. What about silver? Is silver next? But what proof do we have? How about the CP lie? The CPI numbers this morning. Yeah. You know, it's beat down gold and silver a little bit. They were due for a correction anyway, but nothing like we would have expected. What about the great employment numbers last week? Remember, we had great, oh my gosh, Bidenomics, it's working. We employed 300,000 illegal immigrants and uh, 50,000 uh, full-time jobs with benefits were lost. But it's great. It's working, right? No, gold and silver are calling BS on all the BS. They're waking up, Okay. The dollar has been strong, strong. I bet the dollar's up now, right? That should be killing. You know, we've talked about that in nauseam. No, lower odds of rate cuts. After what we got this morning, we're hearing all the top. Have you heard all the top analysts, what they're saying? They're saying, oh, now the June rate cuts off the table. Now possibly July's off the table. We already covered this. They're not going to cut. They can't cut rates. That would really light the fuse on inflation. But guess what? I got to get him out. It's a special double, double feature. Jerome, he's in a box, right? Hi, Jerome. You're boxed in. This says recession and inflation. That's stagflation. But he's also in a box because you know what, Jerome? Hello, Jerome. Are you in there? Why are you hiding? <laughs> We know why Jerome's hiding, because old Jeremy, he can't raise rates, because that'll make the, the whole world debt situation that we've already covered blow up, right? But he can't lower rates either, because that'll make inflation blow up. The bottom line, my fellow basement dwellers, and this is the good news, is that the dollar is going to go down in real value, okay? And that's going to be a big big, big, massive underpin for the gold price and silver price. I've got breaking news. We got breaking news. We have uh, Pat Holland and Daniel Diaz. I'm going to add them to the stage. Oh, I need to put my ears on. Hold on, guys. Remember, Missouri has two Federal Reserve banks, not one, but two. The ultimate slap in the face for the Fed would be if Missouri is able to get this legal tender legislation. Let's see if I can add these guys. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. hey, how are you? Hey, welcome to the live stream, guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We're, we're by the way, we've, we've commandeered uh, Representative Bill Hardwick's office. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so 
yeah. Uh, so he was kind enough to allow us his office. It's a very busy day at the Capitol. Yeah. Many, many hundreds of people here in the Capitol. Uh, parking is atrocious right now. So there's a lot of activity up here right now. But of course, you know what we're working on, Ron? I know you're working on legal tender legislation. I got, I'm going to, I'm going to set you guys up because I was just telling everybody that Missouri, as far as I know, is the only state in the country that has two federal reserve banks, one in St. Louis, one in Kansas city. And what a, I don't want to say slap in the face, but what a what a slap in the face for the Fed if we're able to get legal tender legislation. Oh, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't need two here anyway. You know, we can <laughs> we can get by with a quarter of a Federal Reserve Bank, I think. Right, exactly. So what's the big update, guys? What's what's happening with Missouri? And then I want you to to talk to our viewers about why it's such a big deal that we sure. uh, that we get this legal tender legislation passed, not just in Missouri, but in whatever state our viewers joining us from. Gotcha. Okay, so this we're talking specifically about Missouri legal tender bill, although there's many bills around the country. We're talking about Missouri. We're here at the Capitol to work the bill. And right now the bill, uh, we have three paths for success with uh, Missouri's bills. And now if you remember, Ron, at the beginning of the year, there were five uh, legal tender bills that were actually two in the Senate, three in the House, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now we're a month left to the end of session, and we still have three paths. So the first path, of course, is HB 1955, and that's uh, Representative Hartwick's bill. Okay. That one uh, did get some changes done to it uh, by O'Donnell in conference, or it's not a conference, but in committee. And uh, it has yet to go into a rules committee. And when it goes into a rules committee, then, you know, we can get it onto the calendar to get on the floor. Okay. So that was, that's the status of that bill. <clears throat> 735. Now that's an SB. That's a Senate bill. So now we're switching houses from the Senate or from the House to the Senate. That bill is also still in play. It's on the uh, formal calendar and it's second bill up on the formal calendar. As soon as we switch to the formal calendar in the Senate, we should be seeing some action on that as well on the floor. And that'll be exciting because watching uh, Senator Eigel actually uh, pitch gold and silver on the floor is a wonderful sight to see. He's very good at it. Very good. And he's funny. Yeah, okay. So it's a fun experience to see him on the floor with the silver and gold bill. So that one's in play. But there's a third one in play that wasn't even a bill that was actually submitted originally because SB 735 has been amended onto a bank bill, insurance bank bill, which is SB 835. So we have yet another path for success in the state of Missouri. For those of you who don't know, these are very, very important. You want as many paths as possible to get legislation through at the end of the year. If you only have one bill and one path, uh, it's much, much harder to navigate, and you close off options. In fact, that strategy that Patrick instituted here in Missouri, next year, the uh, Citizens Sound Money, we're going to use that exact same strategy in the different states that we're going to be pushing the Sound Money Act. Because I, I, he's right. When you have one bill, it's easy to kill. It's easy to stop. But if you have five different versions of the bill, all slightly different, um, you have multiple paths and you have different sponsors. So that's a really smart strategy that Patrick came up with here in Missouri, and it's really working out well. Wow. Yeah, so Pat Holland, once again, is a trailblazer attacking them on several fronts, right? Yep. <laughs> that's right. Well, well, uh, a question for you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Pat, and then I'll let you get back to your, your, your thought. The uh, why for our viewer. Why, mm -hmm. why should a person in Missouri, but let's say Illinois, California, New York, other states that at some point in the future may have this type of legislation uh, um, moving through their state legislative process, why is it so important? Well, there's actually multiple reasons why it's important, but the very first thing for everyone to understand is, first of all, it's constitutional. Yeah. So uh, that's first and foremost. It's in the United States Constitution. We're supposed to be using silver and gold as money. So that's first and foremost. But the problem is inflation is a very serious problem that we're all facing right now. It's worse even than it was in the 70s. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's monopoly money. Yep. Right? <laughs> no, no. Hold on, Daniel. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. Keep, oh, here it is. Hold on. Hold on. I, 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 you stand corrected, Daniel. This is <laughs> Monopoly. Any more questions? Uh, hang on. If it's show and tell, 
<laughs> if it's show and tell, I got yeah. something to show you here real quick before we continue. <laughs> and this, this and this is real money. Yeah, yeah. Goldbacks. Goldbacks, yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. And, and and that's real money. That's Sorry. Real, that's real money too. <laughs> show that, and tell that, that monopoly paper that you showed us earlier. That's not real money. That's currency. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, well, you know, let me let me let me back up. I like to use this example, like the 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 difference between between this and this is almost negligible, right? Yeah. That's correct. But the difference between these two and this nineteen twenty five peace dollar is oh yeah is massive, yeah. right? This That's right. this this has a lot more in common, right? Uh, it feels the same. And this is vastly different. Sorry, I digress. Right. Yep, but you're absolutely right. What What's the difference between those? Is that monopoly money and, and dollars do not actually increase in purchasing power over time yeah. like gold and silver seem to, right? Yeah. But it's because they're overprinting the monopoly money, right? Mm -hmm. So go to back to your question, it's constitutional to have gold and silver. Uh, we just talked about inflation. In fact, the monopoly money is worth more because that dollar just represents an IOU of debt. That's right. It's so a that, negative one dollar. That's a negative one dollar because it's an IOU. Yep. While the yeah. monopoly money is actually worth something. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'm and, gonna hold on to my monopoly money. Then. Yeah, you might as well. I mean, actually, <laughs> what Daniel said is right. The positive end of that dollar is actually a bond. Yeah. yeah. That's what's worth something, and Which that's is debt. Yep. And so at any rate, you're holding the negative end of the equation. The positive end of the equation is the bond that's actually held by the Federal Reserve. Mm, interesting. So so mm -hmm. they get the they get the 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 value out of dollars. We get the debt out of dollars. Mm -hmm. So yeah, nice little scam. So yes, uh, we have inflation. The inflation's getting worse. We looked at CPI and inflation this morning. It's significantly worse than the government is telling us. We already knew that. But of course, we have the threat of a digital dollar. And there's nothing wrong with running gold and silver side by side with the dollar as a currency, transactional currency, money um, at the same time. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's it's the equivalent of having dollars and Bitcoin, dollars or gold and silver, yeah. you know, dollars. Or in, in some cases, you go down to other, you go to Canada, go to Mexico, they run the dollar along with their dollar or their peso. Mm -hmm. So it's common for many countries to have multiple currencies available for uh, purchasing. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here in the United States. The main reason why <clears throat> inflation is really hurting people, and guess what's going up in value during the inflationary period, yeah. is gold and silver. So when you go to sleep at night, your dollars in the bank account lose value. But while you go to sleep at night, your gold and silver go up in value. Yeah. So it's actually a deflationary currency to have gold and silver. Mm -hmm. It's deflationary. Picture that. You can buy more stuff when you wake up the next morning with your gold and silver, or you can buy less stuff with your dollars when you wake up in the morning. I mean, yeah. it literally is uh, a very, and we're trying to adjust the, there we go. That's a lot better. Thank you. Let me put my phone back here. No, we're working with uh, some high tech equipment over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, and again, I want to thank you and remind our audience. Uh, 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 Patrick Holland and Daniel Diaz are joining us from Jefferson City, the Missouri state capital. Uh, you know, I want to interject something with what you just were saying, Patrick. Uh, it's sure. interesting. The Philadelphia Federal Reserve put out a report, I believe it was early last week, uh, that their research analysts had done on the gold standard. And the results of their report were, were that they had found that uh, gold is an, uh, gold, the gold standard is an excellent way uh, to, to, to have a money system where the units of, of accounting uh, actually maintain their value, right? Maintain Absolutely. their purchasing power. That came, right. <laughs> that came they from even the- made a, They even made a recommendation in that report that they try to have small regions within the country utilize the gold standard without the, author, uh, without the control of a central authority. They actually said that in the article. Wow. So uh, my response on Twitter was, well, how about the states are those small regions? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I, and, and I want, th that's a great point, Daniel. And I want to circle the something that uh, Patrick and I were talking last night on the phone. Um, the other thing that you said in terms of this legislation and why it's so important is that on a federal level in this country, the reality is it's never going to happen. That's correct. On a federal level. And we know on a worldwide basis right now, 
it's happening, right? With the BRICS, we could talk about that for hours, but on a worldwide basis, silver and gold have never lost their their stature as the real form of money, but it's really, I think, re-emerging all over the world right now. It is. Uh, yeah. On a the the on a federal level in the United States, well, no no go, right? I mean, there's some yep. token legislation on a federal level that gets introduced, but it, I think realistically, do you want to speak to that for for a few moments? We'll have Daniel take that one. Daniel, yeah. Hey, uh, you talking about this? Uh, uh, well, uh, but, uh, let's take it from Ron's here. Okay. So. Yeah. What we're talking about specifically is is the fact that uh, Eastern Central Banks are hoarding gold. They are not. Oh, right, right. Okay. Um, the fact the entire world's looking at silver and gold right now. Right. And so, it's not, not just a national issue or a state issue. Oh, well, it's global. States. And also, BRICS has put out reports that they want to um, issue a digital gold back currency. In fact, Zimbabwe is the first country in the world to go back to a gold standard. Now, it's not back to one to one. It's a pool of dollar, U.S. dollars, other foreign currencies, and mostly gold. But the fact that Zimbabwe um, is, is mining gold, purchasing gold for their for their own currency, that China, Russia, um, India, every single central bank is buying gold except for the United States. You know, that, that's an indication that, uh, you know, their goal, now mind you, gold has always been used for international trade between the central banks. Um, but we, I know for a fact that Russia is looking to issue their own gold-backed currency as well. And China's buying up gold like crazy, but they have their own CBDC. So I'm, uh, I've heard rumors that they were thinking about doing a gold currency. Well, that's not necessarily true now that they have their own CBDC. But I mean, every single nation is hurting with yeah. inflation. Every single one, they're printing it into oblivion. Um, you know, so it, it, we're trying to pass some money legislation throughout the country here, but it isn't just a, a, a national issue. We're looking to help internationally as well and other countries that want to bring sound money legislation. In fact, our organization is doing a, a TV show on um, that's going to air most likely Q4 this year on the Discovery uh, Channels or the Discovery Networks, the Science Channel. And it's, it's going to be a global television show. We're going to go to Zimbabwe, Turkey, and interview people who are suffering from inflation and mo modern monetary policy yeah. and then go to Zimbabwe because I really do think with Zimbabwe bringing this gold back currency they're going to stabilize their economy yeah. so um you know I, I, if you want to see where the world's heading just look at what the central banks are doing yeah and they're buying gold and, and and you bring up a great point it's it's not just the United it's the whole world is dealing with uh, a massive debt load, right? $300 yeah. trillion. Dollars. So this really is a worldwide thing. And what we're seeing, it makes sense. Uh, I love the way you described it is uh, because the world is dealing with kind of the after effects of a debt binge, a worldwide debt binge. And I think a lot of people would attribute that to uh, the United States uh, kind of fiscal and monetary policy. We could go into that for hours as well, but the whole world is dealing with, with this inflation and and debt issue and what's the whole world doing well they're going to silver and gold right yeah and, and in fact you know mr slammy you know on the gold and silver side it, it, they're buying hundreds of millions of dollars worth of shorts on gold and silver and they can't keep it down yeah. Yeah. It's the first time that Mr. Slammy can't keep the, the prices down because I think they're losing control. I think the currencies around the world are, are extremely weak. People are realizing that the, their fiat currencies are going to collapse and they're buying up gold and silver along with the central banks. So demand is extremely high. I, I don't think it's possible for them to suppress gold and silver anymore. I think your bears are going to be unfolded here shortly. <laughs> hey, well, hey I, actually, I'd love to say something here, Ron, but it's yeah. just between the two of us, okay? Okay, yeah. Okay, it's just between us, all right? <laughs> yeah, us and the okay. 609 people that are watching us right now. Okay, but, okay. Yeah, but, all right, yeah. yeah, understood. But what if, what if money is moving out of the three quadrillion derivative market and starting to go into gold and silver? Ooh, hold on, I want to pull something up. I don't know if you can okay. see this. Yep, uh, I sure can. Exter's pyramid, and yeah, right up there we have derivatives. Uh, yeah, that, very interesting concept, Pat. You said three quadrillion. What if just one percent of the derivatives market goes bad? And would that be thirty trillion? <laughs> that would be thirty trillion, Pat. That would that might raise the price of gold and silver just a tad. 
Yeah, well, let's let me let me let me get over here real quick. I want to remember now. It's just between us. I know, just between okay. us. Right. Here's a here's a tweet from Lawrence McDonald a few days ago where he points out that uh, gosh darn it, I can't see that. I, th- I I can't. Oh no, bear with me. Welcome to Ron's okay. basement, the home of there it is, the entire silver market. Maybe you can see it on your screen. Yep. I think the market cap is what one point six trillion. That's yep. correct. Yeah, that would be so. That would mean if one percent of that derivatives market were to uh, were were to fall apart, and that money went looking for a new home, mm-hmm. that would be like almost a twenty x just for the silver market. And that's just you yeah. know a very simple example. Yeah. Uh, but you know, at current prices, that would easily be five hundred dollars silver. But what if two percent? What if five percent of that derivatives market? Uh, you know, or the debt market, or anything else that's piled up on that extras pyramid. Needs well, to see, find, yeah. That once again, shh, is yeah. between us, okay? All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. But the fact of the matter is, bond market has always been considered the safest place to put your money ever. Yeah. And money is leaving the bond market because it's not safe and it's yeah. not yielding anywhere near as much as inflation is taking away from the investors. They yeah. have to find a better place to put their money. Don't shh. tell any. Shh. Yeah. And, and, and thank you for reminding me of that, Pat, because. I don't know, it's probably been six to nine months ago. I don't have the research in front of me. Everybody talks about the stock market, the stock mm-hmm. market, right? The bond market is like multiple, multiple times bigger than the stock market. But everybody talked, you know, CNBC, I mean, they meant, you know, I think the stock market gets like 90% of the focus and 10% goes to the bond market. But the bond mm-hmm. market, that's a little secret, that, right? Again, the bond market's mul- yeah, multiple times <laughs> bigger. And that is falling apart. Look at, I mean, yeah. look at what's yep. going on with, That's uh, great. you know, with, with the banks, with their, all the treasuries they bought three, four years ago that are now worth 60 cents on the dollar, 70 yeah. cents on the dollar. So yeah, it because is. Because the Fed it, lied to them saying that they weren't going to drop interest or increase interest rates that fast. And they did. They lied to the banks. Yeah. And the Fed is causing these collapses. You know, this is a special event today because I'm bringing bringing him out for the third time. Our old friend Jerome Powell. Oh, right? oh yeah. man, he's got his. He has. His, I don't know if you can see. He has his unicorn in there that he squeezes oh. when he needs to create more paper <laughs> unicorn fart dust money. But he's really in a predicament too. Uh, and then we're going to get back to this Missouri legislation and if there's any call to action you guys have. But. He's in a predicament because, that, yeah, right. This morning we got, oh, surprise, surprise, inflation's going up, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, well, that means that that the Fed can't, it's going to be harder for them to lower rates because that would ignite inflation even more. So, okay, so he, he can't really lower rates, but can he raise rates to fight inflation? How can he raise rates where we know what's going on, right? There's so much debt, corporate debt, government debt, personal debt, that it can't accommodate higher rates, right? It's no, there's already no solution. Yeah, there's yeah. also another secret. Shh. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, we have to roll over a bunch of debt this year, and they yeah. can't afford to do it at the current interest rates without raising literally uh, an additional seven hundred billion dollars per year to pay for interest above the interest right. we're already paying. Yeah. So yeah. Shh, don't tell anyone about that, though. Yeah, I, I heard <laughs> Dan. Tr- Go ahead, Daniel. There is no solution. They, If they drop interest rates rapidly just so they can refinance those loans, that's going to freak the market out. There'll be a collapse. Yeah. If they do nothing, those those uh, $900 billion worth of commercial real estate loans that are coming due in the next month or two are going to forfeit. And mm-hmm. it's going to collapse the market. It's going to collapse the commercial markets, which are going to go to the stock market, which are then the, the Fed's going to try to. Uh-oh. Hold on, guys. Well, we lost Daniel and Patrick there temporarily. The other thing um, uh, that I'll throw in, well, we talked about this earlier, is that from a um, from a uh, uh, from the perspective of inflation, uh, the Fed can't control the supply side. Up, oh, they're back. Hey, guys. <laughs> uh oh, there you go. Okay, sorry. We we can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. We cannot hear him. Okay. You, can you hear me? Is your head, it's on your headphones. Oh. <laughs> Hang on one second, man. We have a, a... I, I had a teacher how to do not disturb. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah, Hang do on. not disturb. Yeah, I thought, well, they've had enough, Boom. right? <laughs> so There's a boat he doesn't know how to use the... Okay, headsets off, so, so how do we go read... through speaker. How does it go through speaker? Let's see. Mike. Well, I'd probably Mike. need to talk. Settings. 
uh, I can audio. hear you fine. You guys uh, are good. iPhone microphone echo. That's I don't know. I have no Gosh, idea. Darn it. We might have to drop off and come back. Yeah, sorry, buddy. We'll, uh, be, right we'll be right back. Okay, they'll they'll be right back. You know what, guys? In the interim, let's talk about this massive, massive news that is breaking about Costco and gold. Okay, I want to run over real quickly to this article. This is crazy. I, and I had no idea that it was at this level. Here we go. CNBC. Wait till you hear this. <laughs> Costco. This I misread this last night. Costco selling as much as 200 million in gold bars monthly. This is according to Wells Fargo estimates. Um and we want to go down here. Gold has turned into money for Costco, where the yellow metal sales begun last year. They just started this last year. So they 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 sold last year in their fourth fiscal quarter $100 million worth of gold bars. There's a gold rush, uh, a gold mania almost going on with uh, Costco customers. In fact, sales are so brisk uh, that analysts at Wells Fargo expect revenue may quote may now be running at 100 million to 200 a month a rapid acceleration since bullion hit the warehouse club uh in the summer of 2023 hold on here i'm going to make sure here we go we're going to get back hey guys can hey you hear sorry me? about that yeah i got a phone call and it kind of wrecked everything on my end sorry about yeah that. no i i deal with the same thing because uh i use my phone a lot i completely understand no worries no worries. We were talking about inflation. The other thing I wanted to throw in too about inflation that people don't talk about a lot is we, we just assume that the Fed with their monetary policy can control inflation. There's this other component supply side uh, where like, you know, the Fed can't control the price of oil. The Fed can't control, uh, especially now with the BRICS nations growing so much in power. We, they just don't have as much, their potency is waning. The dollar isn't as strong as it used to be, and it's not as influential, and they're tired of the American government using the dollar as a weapon through sanctions. Yeah. So they're dumping the dollar and joining the BRICS uh, coalition, using their own local currencies right now, and eventually they'll have their own currency backed by gold, whatever yeah. fraction that is. But it will be a pool of all the currencies within the BRICS nations with gold as a foundation. Yeah. 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 It's in interesting. And I know there's different ideas being floated about that, about like ways that they could uh, maybe use their currencies. And then at the end of the month, even if there's like an imbalance but between Russia and China, that they would settle that with this gold backed currency. But at the end of the day, I just think it's safe to say that, like, uh, I think there's there's two two big sweeping statements I, uh, that, that I would make. And I think the first one's the most important that you know, after talking to you guys, like I feel better about silver and gold already. I already felt really, really good that at the end of the day, the bottom line is the dollar. We You can talk about all these different symptoms and all these different things going on. But the, the bottom line is the dollar is losing real value. Yeah. I mean, it already has right over the last 50 years. And as we look out into the next coming years, I think the prospects for the dollar are even much worse much, much worse than they were over the last 10 years or 20 years. So right. I think what you guys are doing uh, in Missouri, uh, Patrick, with the Missouri Freedom Initiative and Daniel with Citizens for Sound Money, more on a state by state, but on a more national basis, is critical to help people, uh, everyday people. And that's what we're talking about, right? We're not talking about the 1% or the or the no. 0.1%. We're talking about what you're doing, helping average people yeah, just everyone. mean just 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 to be able to just to be able to um for the work that they do today to be able to maintain that value uh for a year or five years in the future right to, to not have it completely uh deteriorated by inflation yeah yeah it, you're absolutely right you know this is do or die time really i meant the inflation's been here now for three years right yeah what have states done to protect their people? What has the, the federal government done to protect their people? The federal government won't do anything. It's yeah. exciting to see when Thomas Massey comes out with a bill to back the dollar with gold. Yeah, it's cool, it's exciting. It's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. So the states have to do this. This And by the way, it's their purview in Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution anyway. It's yeah. the purview of the states to protect their citizens. Yeah. And 
I got a meeting at 12 o'clock with um, uh, Rod Jetton, which is uh, rep a speaker. Chief block. chief of staff for the House Speaker. Yeah, he's Speaker okay. Blocker, Chief of Staff. So I got to leave here in about four minutes. But okay. um, but yeah, I, uh, it's, it's very important with the legislation that Patrick is working on to push through Bill Igles bills, you know, and, and, and it's. You know, the, the 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 tagline for our TV show is Sound Money Movement, a foundation of freedom. Without sound money, we don't have sound markets. And without sound markets, we don't have financial liberty. So mm -hmm. by bringing gold and silver back to the state of Missouri, which they have the most comprehensive bill still alive in the country, we can point to Missouri as a leader in the sound money movement to push the, so that other states can emulate what they're doing. And when the collapse happens, which, you know, I think that there's going to be a major economic downturn within the next two months, either the end of May or, or sometime in June, because that's when most of these commercial bills are going to be coming through. Uh, and what what can, like I was saying before we got cut off, what can the Fed do? I don't see any answer where it doesn't lead to an economic downturn. There is no if they do if they do quantitative easing again, it's just going to have a hyperinflationary event. If they leave the, the the interest rates the same, it's going to cause the loans to forfeit and the stock market to collapse. If they raise interest rates it's even worse, it's going to make the bond market even worse. There is no solution that Powell can do to solve this problem. There is going to be a collapse, in my opinion, and it's going to happen sooner than later. And we need to try to get this bill passed so that when it does pass, we can go to the, all the governors of the states that we were trying to pass some money act and say, look, this is the real reason we were trying to pass this bill. We didn't want to tell you the real reason because, right. you know, they think we have tin hats. But right. this is the real reason. Now, look at what Missouri did. They're the only state that decided to protect their citizens, do the exact same for our, same thing for our state, call special legislative, legislative session, and let's get the Sound Money Act passed. And that's that's what we're, where we're at right now. And Ron, you asked earlier, or you kind of alluded to, why is it important to pass this legislation? And really, what it really comes down to is whether or not businesses are comfortable transacting in the gold and silver. And they're going to want a few things from their government. They're going to want to know number one, it's legal tender, but they'd also like to see you know the state government accepting gold and silver uh, in the payment of taxes if offered by the taxpayer. That'll make them feel a lot more comfortable to start transacting in gold and silver. As soon as communities start doing that, they can start healing. Um, so once again, using money that actually has value. And that's what this is all about, really. And yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, uh, I was going to I was going to mention Rob Keints. Um, I know he's a friend of, of both of yours as well. Daniels. I talked with him about six weeks ago, and in in the in the in the process, you talked about healing, Pat, um, and that's what brought this thought up. When I was talking with Rob, I said, "Is it safe to say that like the the greatest real periods of prosperity and growth and greatness occurred in the United States?" when we were on the gold and silver, we were on a bimetallic. He said, absolutely. I guess he'd written a book. He said, I actually have a whole section in my book that outlines that, that this does facilitate some healing. And for the people that need it most right now, right? Like middle Americans, average people like me and you, you know, the top 1%, they don't need any healing. They're doing no. just great, right? The statistics make that uh, overwhelmingly obvious. That's right. So my hat's really off to what you, what both, both you and Daniel are doing. Absolutely. Okay. And as far as the call to action goes, because I know Daniel's got to leave here in a matter of a minute. Yeah. Um, let's let's do it this way. Um, for those of you who are in Missouri, uh, go to senate.mo.gov, and that's the Missouri Senate website and find your senator, call them up, ask them to uh, vote yes, and also push for any legal tender legislation involving gold and silver they see. You know, but like I said, there's a lot, there's multiple varieties here. It's good we have paths, we have options, we have choices, this is good. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll tell you what, if you don't live in Missouri, we certainly can't stop you from calling in. Um, this might be adopt a senator day. Um, and you know, will be very powerful as I'm walking into Plockard's office, phones are ringing. So no, 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 no. Oh, never no, mind. No, we can't do that at this time. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, at this at this time, if we need <clears throat> if we need uh, phone calls to Plocker, we'll definitely let you know. But right now, it's not a good time okay, for that. Never mind. Scratch that. Yep. <laughs> so so is for those of you outside the Missouri uh, boundaries, and you want to participate in this 
great experiment we call liberty and freedom the state of missouri and help us get gold and silver passed across the finish line they rarely ask you know where you're calling from uh it's adopt a senator day there in in the state of missouri so just pick your you just go through the pictures of senators pick one you like and just give them a call doesn't matter if they're a democrat or republican tell them how much you like the silver and gold bill how much you need them to vote yes and tell them why it's important to you always remember that's important just don't say please vote yes on this bill. Thank you very much. That's not enough. You have to give them a reason. Yeah. So, but those of you in Missouri, we need your help. I meant this is, legislation like this does not go through easily. All right, and, guys, I got to get okay. going. All right. See gotcha. you, Daniel. Thank you. you. All right. Thanks for luck, your buddy. work. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. I'll keep the, I'll keep the fires burning here. Um, <laughs> So that's that's the best avenue right now for us, yeah. uh, because there's other things going on in the background that we're not we're not going to be discussing. But at any rate, that's what we can do publicly. We can call the senators right now. Yeah. Let's get yeah. them. Is, let me let me let me. I want I want to ask our viewers a question, and that would be, you know, I, I can safely say that the 750 people that are live with us right now, Pat are either a silver enthusiast, a gold enthusiast, maybe even a platinum enthusiast. But, you know, why, if you if you love these metals and I think are like them or believe in them as, as like we've already talked about their ability to provide the stable store of value, then I would think that by default, they would be uh, very excited and very supportive of this legislation. Yep. Uh, and what's going on is that is that safe to say pat i would say so yeah uh and and once again we don't and we don't deal with platinum and and mm -hmm. it's not because we don't like platinum so i want to sure. let the platinum fans out there i like platinum too by the way platinum's not in the u.s constitution gotcha that's the reason why it's difficult to get it across with gold and silver on the same bill so i have had people contact me before and say why isn't missouri doing something with platinum that's specifically why we don't have anything against it but the founding fathers did not include platinum in the constitution got it got it understood so what was the website that everyone can go to again you bet it it's senate.mo.gov okay i'm gonna write that down and i'll put that in a pinned comment um on yep. this on this video senate.mo dot gov uh yep. very interesting um and what about on a national basis i know you're obviously with the missouri freedom initiative uh, mofree.org if you guys want to learn right. more about pat and his in his organization but you've been spending some time with daniel are you getting a feel for what could be going on any any commentary you can give us uh kind of on other states throughout the united states and, and what's going on uh, and i know i'm asking you this off the cuff you don't have prepared notes but any general yep. thoughts on what you're saying the general thoughts are this what daniel said um you know rings true um actually there's two really big games left in town as far as state legislation goes for silver and gold that's tennessee and missouri Okay. We're still in both states are still in play. Other states have got stuff done this year. So that's good. You know, mm -hmm. Wisconsin got rid of sales tax on silver and gold. Yeah. That is, like I said, that you don't, you know, look at that and say, oh, that's nothing. That's huge, actually. That's huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you got sales tax, you have got to get rid of it before you can get legal tender done anyway. Um, Tennessee is going for legal tender status for gold and silver. They got the depository done last year, if you remember, Ron. Now mm -hmm. they're going for legal tender. Uh, so, but the deal is we're doing kind of a big enchilada bill in Missouri, and that's because we have grassroots to support the bill. So okay. I, I would absolutely love, you know, basically for our bill to go through for that reason, to show everyone you can do it as an enchilada bill or a la carte bill, you know, all the aspects that you need for legal tender. Now, if it gets through, it will become an example literally yeah. for the entire nation mm -hmm. when we have much harder economic times coming they can do special sessions with the governor and their general assemblies in their states they can actually do that and uh so they can you know implement new law very quickly and if missouri has a working model then basically it becomes easier for those other states 
to apply the same model that we're doing here in Missouri, that the bills, you know, the Senator Eichel kind of kick-started this thing, if you remember December 1st of 2022 when he pre-filed. And yeah. um, he's been right on top of this. I mean, you know, his bills are top-notch and they're recognized nationally as the strongest silver and gold bills in the country. Interesting. We've got a, a question from one of the viewers, Pat, maybe mm -hmm. you can address this. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be beneficial to the government if they did receive gold or silver as payment for taxes? It absolutely would, because if they have a depository, that's an excellent question, by the way, uh, to Leanne. Leanne, Leanne, Leanne Trevino, yes. Yep. Because if you have a depository, you can now start, I don't want to use the word hoarding, but you can start uh, replacing some of your reserves that you have maybe for your state pension fund that are currently in bonds that are low yielding 4.11% 10-year treasuries or whatever. Um, you can replace it with something that's that's literally going up significantly faster. Hold on, Pat. I need to interrupt you. I need to interrupt you. I got a secret for you. Those okay. bonds in the pension fund, mm -hmm. they're losing value. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> that's just between us, Ron. Okay. Right. Um, but the fact of the matter is it's very true. And they're going to see the pension fund start to evaporate because they're paying out more than they're collecting in the interest. The yields are low and they're not keeping up with inflation. Real inflation is probably somewhere between 15 and 20% right now. The federal government will tell you it's 4%. Um, so, but, you know, we have a saying in the Missouri Freedom Initiative, the government lies by a factor of five. So you could probably take it to the bank that it's real close to 20% because they're saying 4%. I don't, I don't allow such speech on my channel, Pat. Oh, of course like, not. Of course government not. Government lies by factors of uh, 15. Yeah. <laughs> Here, You're me, probably me... more accurate than I am on that for sure. So I, I appreciate that answer to Leanne's question because yeah, it would be beneficial, right? Just like, yep. For you and me, it might be beneficial to consider, and our viewer, uh, basement dwellers, I think it's safe to say, like to hold silver and gold. Sure. It could be beneficial. Let me pull this up real quick. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I know you're on a phone. Yep. But this is a, um, uh, a, 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 hold on here. How do I get rid of this? Oh, shoot. Well, anyway, it's a list I showed earlier of different items starting with, and we won't go through them yep. all, but like orange juice, yep. uh, price January of 2020, $3, price today, 430 up 40%. I mean, you look at some of these numbers, milk up 50% in the last four years, yep. uh, chicken up 60%, eggs up 100%. So uh, to say that inflation has not been a, a, a problem and something that's affecting uh, you know, people all over the, uh, oh, hold on. I think I figured out how to get rid of that. There we go. Thank you, Leanne, again, for that question and the super chat. Um, it just demonstrates how important it is to, to, to have your, your wealth, you know, we're not given financial advice, but at, for me, I feel comfortable having a, a, a good chunk of my wealth invested in something that's, uh, proven itself over thousands of years as a good store of value. Sure. Ron, a great example. I mean, you've got a, you know, you're stacking silver, just a little bit of silver, maybe a little bit of gold, uh, but you're not, you're not stacking bonds there in your basement, are you? <laughs> no, I, no, 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 we... no, I didn't think you were. And, <laughs> and you know, uh, actually, if you did, I would be surprised because you're smarter than that. Yeah. Why would you be uh, literally saving in something that is literally going down because the value of the dollar is going down? Why would right. you even do that? That's what states do. That's what states do with their reserves and their pension funds. Now, I realize, that, you know, that it gets people upset when I talk about this stuff. And I don't know the exact rate of the pension fund in Missouri right now, but I did hear recently 4.11%. Last year, it was 2.4%. It, it goes with the interest rates, of course. But the fact of the matter is, it's it doesn't matter if it's 2.4 or 4.11. It's not keeping up with inflation. So the pension fund is actually shrinking, slowly shrinking, because they're paying out more than they're getting in on their dividends, on their yields. Yep. This is a problem for pension funds for states, but also not just pension funds, but sometimes in reserves, uh, you pass a bill in a state for a project that's not even gonna start for two years. 
-hmm. So the money's been appropriated. It's sitting in reserves, losing value, and the cost of that project goes up in the two-year period. Right. You know, if you had gold and silver in your, you know, in your treasury for reserves, you can actually mitigate some of this. You know, you yeah. can actually keep up with inflation, you know, keep up the buying power. And if you know you're going to be holding on to it for two years, gold and silver are a much better thing to hang on to than bonds. Uh, because as Daniel said, we kind of run out of options here with the dollar. They're going to print. They're going to yeah. print. Yeah, That's they have really no good. options. Right. I mean, yeah. monetize the debt. Basically, That's which right. is That's right. money printing, uh, fiat, you know, frac whatever. It's all, it's all a bunch of funny money at the end of it the is. day. So, hey, Pat, I know you've got a lot to do there at the state capitol, and I, on behalf of myself and our viewers, right, these basement dwellers all over the world, everybody, please give this a thumbs up for uh, for our friend Pat Holland from the Missouri Freedom Initiative. You are doing great work, not just for the citizens of Missouri. Uh, but for people all throughout the country. And uh, thank you for joining us today. You bet. Thank you. I want to say to the basement dwellers, I absolutely love you guys. Keep <laughs> up the good work. The state legislation is very important. Um, you know, Tennessee also has stuff going on. So if you're in Tennessee, look up what I can't uh, at this right time right now. I can't look it up. You do have a bill that's alive and well right now. Work on your bill in Tennessee. And I do believe it's legal tender. Uh, you need that. So Tennesseans, work on your bill. Missourians, uh, we need to work on our bill. And if you're anywhere else in the country where your bill is dead or you didn't have one to begin with, like I said, today's Adopt a Senator Day. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Pat. We'll look forward. As always, it's a big pleasure for us. Big treat to have you in the basement. So we'll, uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you soon. Okay. Appreciate you, buddy. God bless you. God bless the basement dwellers. Thanks, Pat. Take care, man.